nice soft pillow. Next one's got a broken leg. Eat! You make it look real easy. Well, how are you, old buddy? I was just riding by. I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Hey, you remember that time we was down in Tucson? You took that job busting Bronx, huh? What do you want, Ward? I told you I was just riding by and I. Okay, so I was not exactly just riding by. As a matter of fact, I come to ask a favor of you. You want to borrow some more money, Ward? You know me pretty well, don't you, old buddy? Yeah, Ward, I know you pretty well. Well, I need a hundred bucks each. I plan to do some fixing up around that old stump ranch of mine. That's the same excuse you gave me last month to borrow fifty dollars. I've got to learn to keep my story straight, don't I? Say hello to Nora for me. Yeah. Oh, he, I, I really do need that money, old buddy. All right. I'll give you a chance to earn it. Earn? How? Break that bronc. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, if that's it. That's it. Okay. Hold it, Dave. Mr. Whitcomb's gonna ride this one. Okay, he. Dave for to do bronc busting. What's Whitcomb doing out there? Oh, Nick, honey, not now. Who's this? It isn't serious, is it? We don't know yet. Mother, this is Ward's wife, Nora. And this is my brother, Nick. How do you do? I'm so sorry. How did this happen? Well, it was my idea. 
Well, where is he? Here comes the doctor now. Doctor, this is Mrs. Whitcomb. How do you do, Mrs. Whitcomb? Oh, well, it's going to be all right, isn't he, doctor? Well, it's a little too early to tell. Well, what is it? His legs. They're paralyzed. Now, it could be a temporary condition, a small spinal fracture impinging on a nerve. I'm afraid only time can tell us that. Well, there must be something you can do. Very little for the moment. I've given him something to uh, reduce the pain and help him sleep. He mustn't be moved, not for the present at least. Can I see him? Of course. I'll take you up to him. I'll drop by tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye now. Bye. Whitcomb ever been on a bronc before? Accidents happen. You're not answering the question. I don't know. You don't know. You put a man up on a bronc and you don't know. Get your spurs out of me. Heath. All right, I guess I came down a little too heavy. What are you going to do? I'll break that horse. Go ahead. Break your back. If you think it will help. Silas has some supper for you. I'm not hungry. Oh, Heath, it was an accident. Nick was right. I shouldn't have made him ride that horse. Why did you? All of a sudden, I got fed up with him coming around asking for money. I was going to make him earn it. Well, I guess I did, didn't I? How much money have you given him? Around 300. Why? Because he's an old friend. Is that the only reason? When he came to Stockton a couple of months ago, he picked up the old Palmer place, and he kept talking how he's going to fix it up and settle down. Oh, I know he didn't mean it, but... Look, when you've, when you've grown up with someone, when you've... Worked with him, ridden with him, hunted with him. You can't help but feel something. That you owe him something? Not that exactly, but that you've got to help him. You just don't know how it was with Ward. He, he never could make anything work. Did he really try? Oh, a couple of times, but he was always getting lost in some scheme for striking it rich. And he always talked about how we were going to live off the fat of the land when he made that big strike. But he never did. Suddenly, all of Ward's dreams came true. But not for him, for you. And now you feel guilty about it. That's the truth, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, I think Ward does. I think he wants you to feel that you owe him something. And now I do. laughing at? Oh, I don't know. I just felt like laughing. I remember when we used to laugh about nothing. We used to laugh all the time. We still do. Alone. Oh, come on, honey. Cheer up. I'm going to be out of this bed and on my feet no time at all. I'm sure you will. And then you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to buy you a new outfit from your head to your toe and go to San Francisco and have ourselves a real time. Now, how do you like that? I love it. Of course, I'm going to have to mix some business with pleasure. I know some men I just might be able to get interested in that logging deal of Montana Shad Martin was telling me about. You know, if I could bring some... Some investors to Shad, why? Well, he'd just have to cut me in on that timber deal. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess he would. And then we... We could buy us a spread just like this one. And 
hire somebody to run it for us. <laughs> now, would that be some to have a place just like this? Oh, I'm going to get myself in on that timber deal of Shad some way. I'm not going to miss this chance. I mean that, honey. Yes, Ward. the doctor driving away. What did he say? I can take Ward home tomorrow. Home? But don't you think he ought to stay here where he can get the attention he needs? Well, he can get all the attention he needs at home. And besides, we can't impose any longer. You're not imposing. All right. No, I just think he would feel better if he were at home. And I know I would. I'd just be back in my own place, in my own kitchen, and... Well, you know what a nester I am. Don't just don't worry about us. We'll be fine. All right. Uh, it's Wake. Would you like to see him? Morning, Nora. Good morning. Heath. Heath, uh, I'd like to have a word with you tonight. Tell Ward I'll be up in a minute. Boy, the sky's falling down. We got about a week's work to do today. West boundary fence needs mending. Got to get a crew of men to work on that road into Long Meadows. And we got about four or five Bronx to bust. And old McCall says if we don't get those cows out to pasture pre... Oh, now, boy, you haven't heard a word I said. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I was just... Oh, look, Heath. Take my word for it. Whitcomb's gonna be all right. Now, I know a lot of men that were in worse condition than he is. And today, they're just as good as ever. I know some men who aren't. 